Ha. Huh. Well, good thing this video is not about disc golf. It's about planning a project. So let's get to that. Ah. Well, now that I'm home, let's go over some tips and tricks for planning a project, plus one super important tip per step here. Uh, so let's get into it. Plus, make sure you stick till the end because there's some pretty good tips. Step number one, the idea. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when planning your project is to come up with an idea. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, it's actually pretty hard. The best thing that I like to do when I'm trying to think of my next project is to think of the problems that I run into either day to day or, you know, however often, and try and figure out if maybe I can solve those problems with code. They don't even really need to be problems. <laughs> it could just be something as simple as a hobby that you like doing, and you just want to make something for it. It doesn't even have to be super specific. Ding, ding, ding. Most important tip alert. <laughs> so lame, is it's okay to make something that already exists. Just try to put your own spin on it. And even if you don't want to do that and you just want to try and copy something that already exists, that's totally fine too. A lot of people will be blocked by this and just say, oh, well, something already exists. But like, like in this video right here, I made an app that basically copies almost everything that another app did it was a website and I wanted to have it on an iPad. So I made it. So as an example, I've started to play disc golf recently, which you probably noticed at the start of the video. And I really love it by Fuse. <laughs> if you've never seen Latitude 64, you should check them out. Whether you like disc golf or not, pretty awesome stuff. So maybe I'd like to make a program for disc golf. There's already tons of sites out there that list, you know, a bunch of discs that list, you know, how they fly, um, even measure distances. And there's even apps like UDisc, which does basically everything you'd probably ever need. But it could still be fun to make something. And yes, this is a disc, not a frisbee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you like disc golf, you'll, you'll appreciate that. Moving on, project scope. What the hell does that mean? A project scope basically means what is your project going to include? Now, even at a high level, this is important. For example, if for my disc golf app, I wanted to make this tiny little microchip that I could just implant into any disc so that when I threw the disc, I got real time measurements of how the disc is flying so that I can figure out how I can throw it better and then it's transmitting to my phone in real time and I can see all this awesome data. Probably not gonna do that because <laughs> I don't know how to make a little chip like that. I could maybe eventually figure it out, but then I'd have to somehow get it in a disc and not make the disc fly weird. So yeah, probably not gonna do that. So instead, make the scope of your project a little bit limited to start and then make it more complex if you feel like it needs it or you just really wanna do something. But do that after some parts are already working. Important tip, time. Try to include one or two things that you don't actually know how to do in your project when scoping out your project. Now again, this doesn't have to be making a tiny chip. Like you don't, I have no idea where I'm gonna do, how I would do that, right? Is it possible for me to eventually figure out how to do that? Sure, but that's maybe a bit of a stretch. Maybe I should figure out how to like do some hardware stuff and then I can maybe make that as a next step. So try and, you know, spread your horizons and try and learn something new because I can promise you, if your project is about something a bit new that you haven't done before, it's gonna be way more interesting for you. If you're just like, yeah, I've already, I've already used Python, so I'm gonna code that in Python. I've already used uh, HTML, I'm gonna use HTML. I'm not gonna try any of these fancy frameworks. If you use a fancy framework, I guarantee you, you're gonna have more fun because you're learning something because it's new. Just saying, it's a fact. At least in my brain, it's a fact. And I'm pretty sure it is an actual fact. <laughs> So for my disc golf app, which 
I don't, the more I talk about it, the more I actually do want to make it. But for my disc golf app, as an example, maybe I'll make a mobile app that has some kind of like geo data tracking stuff so that I can like measure how far I have thrown a disc, but just based off of like at my start point, I push a button, I walk to my disc, I push a button, it tells me how far I threw it. Could be pretty useful. It'd be also cool if I could have my app contact a server to then list the disks that are available, right? That way I can actually see all of the disks that exist from like major companies <laughs> and, you know, show them on the phone. Pretty neat. Number three, or step three, whatever we're calling this, features, the fun stuff. All right, so you've got your idea. The next thing to do is get a list of features that you want to support. Perfect. Features are just things that your program can do. So for my disc golf app, some features I might want to include might be list out the discs that I have in my bag, which would actually be really cool. Be able to build a bag based off of some database of discs, which again, kind of going back to the old one, that the last step where I can retrieve those, those discs from some server. I can maybe provide a link to how I can buy the discs from a bag. Being able to maybe share a bag with a friend. A bag being like a backpack of discs, by the way. <laughs> that probably should have prefaced that. And finally, what I mentioned before, being able to track how far a throw went. It doesn't have to be fancy with a chip in a thing, but you know, just walk, I can walk. Plus maybe more features that I'll think of as I start building the app. Most important tip, just the tip. Figure out a set of features that once they're done, you can consider your app done, complete, finished. This is super, super, super important. If, of all the stuff we're gonna talk about, this is probably the most important thing. Most people, I'm, guil I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, when they make a, a project, they'll add some features, and then they'll think, oh, what if I can do this? And then they'll add that. And then they'll, then they'll think, what if I do this? And then add that. But they never actually polish it and get it working because they keep wanting to add new things. And then to them, it's never really done. So from your list of features, if you've written them down, mark one to three, no more than three, features from that list that you want to support. That's like the piece de resistance of your app. That if you didn't have the app, you wouldn't really want to build it. So for my disc golf app, that might be for me, being able to measure how far I've gone or how far the disc has gone and being able to list out the discs that I have in my bag. I can even add them manually. That's totally fine. I don't actually need to contact a server if I don't have, if I don't really have to, but it could be useful to maybe add that on. But again, that's a, that's a stretch goal. I don't need to do that in order for it to be complete for me. That way, if I make the app with those two features, it's still useful for me. And I would have learned how to use geo data and measure distances. And I also would have learned how to store data in a local database on a mobile app. Useful all around. Well, the other features would be nice. And you probably will want to build them after you've completed your main features. It's important to take a step back and actually make it so the app is functioning and you have it on your phone or if, if it's an app or it has a website and it's live that you can go and access and make sure it is in that complete state with that minimum set of features and then look into going to add more. Because if you keep adding more, it'll never get to that finished state. I can almost promise you. If you did do that well, though, if you've ever gone to that, kept adding stuff and adding stuff and you still finished it, good on you, because that's really hard to do. Step four, cat, how? How are you gonna do it? So you've figured out what your project is and a list of features that you wanna support. So how are you gonna do it? Most important tip, mainly may, maybe the main tip actually, do some research into your options before starting. Bold, do that. And as I said previously, try something if you haven't tried it before. 
even if you end up not liking it and switching back to something else, at least you've tried it and you now have an actual opinion on it. So how do you research things? Well, there are tons of tools for this. First off, Google, surprise, surprise. Then there's some new ones that are also super awesome like ChatGPT and Gemini. So if I were to do this for the disc golf app and I wanna make an app, I would maybe Google something like this. The best ways to make a mobile app 2024, adding the date, pretty useful. And then I would put framework and library in this case uh, in quotes. Uh, the reason for this is that framework and library are then now required to be in the results. And look what you get here. First off, you get some options here. Flutter, React Native, Xamarin, <laughs> I have no idea how to say that, Ionic, uh, a bunch of other stuff. Okay, cool. But then look, there's also some great sites. So this is a, a geek, Geeks for Geeks. You'll kind of see from time to time. They're pretty solid. Uh, and you can go in here and then here you can see number one is React Native from their perspective. Um, and you can kind of read about what are some of your options. One extra tip though is when you're using Google, try and find something that is kind of from a trusted source. The more and more you Google, especially in a specific field, like in programming, the more you're gonna understand which sources are trusted. But what you'll find is the less specific you are, so so if we just say like make mobile, oh, make a mobile app 2024, well, you're now gonna start finding all of these, these sites that are actually just trying to sell you whatever their thing is. So like, I don't know what appnality is. Maybe it's good, I have no idea. But realistically, from my perspective, I wanna make something myself. I don't wanna build an app in 30 minutes with no code. Because yeah, maybe, maybe you can do that. And maybe you can just get AI to help you with a bunch of stuff, and that's cool. Go for it. But I like to know what my app is doing so that if I needed to go build it again or build something even better, I know how. For ChatGPT or Gemini, I would ask something like this. I am going to make a personal project where I will make a mobile app. The app should be able to store data in a local database and use geodata to measure distance from one point to another. What kinds of frameworks or libraries should I use? Well, I go ahead and ask ChatGPT this and it starts to spit out some results. So mobile app development frameworks, React Native and Flutter. All right, so those are some pretty good options. We have some local database solutions, libraries for geolocation and distance management. It's kind of spitting out a bunch of options for me. Great. So at this point, you should probably see at least a few options for what you might be able to make your app out of. I would say choose two or three of them, but probably no more than three, and do a little bit more research on them. One of the things that I really like to do when I get to this stage is to do what I call a versus, a versus query in Google. Basically, you just put your two things, you put a versus between, and then you put the, the year. And here we can get some articles of React Native or Flutter in 2024. And you can go ahead, in this case, that's the two that I'm choosing. And in this case, uh, you can go ahead and just look into them and you know see what some people choose. Uh, you know, Flutter, React Native, maybe not the most popular, et cetera, et cetera. You can go down and kind of see some information about them. And ho hopefully it will kind of sway your decision one way or the other. Finally, pick one. <laughs> Pretty simple. But like I said before, if you have used one, maybe just try the other one. Unless you really want to get more experience in the thing that you already know a bit about. In my case for my disc golf app, I can see that chat GPT and a bunch of other places have said that React Native and Flutter are good. You can see that from my versus search. But I've already made an app in Flutter. And honestly, it was great. I have actually made a second app in Flutter since then. But I haven't really reused React Native before. I've used React for web stuff, but I've never used React Native. So I'll probably give that one a try. Step five, start. Follow an initial tutorial with whatever thing you're trying to use. So in my case, React Native, just to kind of get yourself set up. Then after that tutorial, pick one of your two to three features and start implementing that feature only. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always move your code around, 
but just implement that one thing. But before you do that, the most important tip of this step, probably the second most important tip, arguably maybe the most important actually, break down your feature. Trust me, break it down into smaller steps. It will be 100,000 billion times easier. Quote me on that <laughs> if, you, if you want, I guess, I don't care. The reason breaking it down is super important is because let's say for my disc golf app, I wanted to be able to measure the distance from my location to some other starting location in real time. I basically need a map view. I need a point that I've set. And then they need me as another point and then a line going between them showing some kind of distance. So how are we gonna break it down? Well, firstly, I need to figure out where is the person? So I can just Google how to get current location in React Native. And then to retrieve the blah, 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 you can use all this stuff. That's great. But I also see that there's this React Native get location function, or I can go here and see React Native geolocation, a complete tutorial. There's a bunch of options. So I can go ahead, look here. Oh, look, there's some kind of like, uh, maps, you can kind of have this state. Cool. Oh, a map view. Great. Oh, and React Native Maps. Sounds pretty good. So let's go here and actually change this to React Native Maps. And here we go. React Native Maps. It has a map view. It has markers. It has lines. Seems pretty good so far. And well, that even answers my second question of how do I get a map? But if I even Google, how do I get a map? So how to add a map view to React Native app? Well, the first option from free code camp can kind of tell me a lot of stuff. It's this super long thing here and it talks about React Native CLI, all this stuff, and then installing a bunch of stuff. And look at that, React Native maps, the same thing I just ran into. So it looks like that's probably a good option. But look it, I, even, I can basically just follow this tutorial here and actually get to the point where I have an app that shows a map. I'm rhyming. <laughs> All right, so now I have a map in my UI, but I can't track distances or anything. So how do I do that? Well, I can just Google how to track distances between two points with React Native Map. And well, there's a lot of good options here. A lot of people have probably tried to do something like this before. Um, so this person here tried to do something. It looks like there's another package you could potentially use that has a lot of helper methods for this. But if you just go through a couple of the options, you can actually see that this person basically implemented all of this for you. So you can kind of just copy and paste this and see if it works. Or you can just ask ChatGPT or Gemini and they'll probably just code it for you as well. All right, so I now can measure a distance, but how do I add a line between our two points on the map? Well, I can just Google how to draw lines on a map in React Native, and then I'll find this post, where basically this person just has a map view, which I've already seen is supported here, this map view. And then I go down here, and I see that they have these lines, and these lines are based off of some coordinates. So you probably have some coordinates and based off of those coordinates, they link up to make lines. So seems pretty simple. So now I just find the person's location using the first step and then use that to render the map of the user's location. Then I'll need to add a button or something so I can register the current user's location. And then as I walk, it can update to actually draw a line between where the user is, who's holding the phone, and where they were before. And if I have those two coordinates based off of the third thing, I can now see what that distance is and show it to the user on the screen. So that's it. These are the five major steps you need when starting a project so you can actually get it done. Do you think I missed any steps or anything you'd like to add? If so, leave a comment down below or just say hi. Hi. If you like this video, give it some love down below with a big thumbs up and that would be super appreciative. Thanks for watching. And 
if you aren't sure what kind of project you'd like to make, you can follow this video series here where we make a Python UI that can run your Python projects. Basically, you can run your own scripts from another script. Pretty cool. So I'm going to go play some more disc golf. Bye-bye.